It's a cold blood love. It's a cold blood love. It helps us break each other's hearts. This whole time I've been using it like it's been on. No, it hasn't. <laughs> well, we got that one at least. <laughs> Oh wow, look at that. It's cracked all the way. It's cracked on two sides, this side and this side, like a perfect V. Yeah. So it started from the top. I'm gonna say that's a piston failure, yeah. not a ring look, failure. Wow. Look how good the coating is still. Yeah. So the coating is just perfect. That is outstanding. See, there's more that lies deeper than uh, the surface. So I guess partially the ring failed, but it's I'm definitely giving this towards a piston failure. Oh, yeah. So Russ wins this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely broken. Wow. Broken skirt, fractured, fractured all along the inside there. That's amazing. It's on there still. Looks like it's holding itself in over here at the pin boss. That is amazing too that it didn't completely come off and destroy the engine even more. Wow. Chances are this could have been broke for quite some time, too. And it finally let go at the top. Mm hmm Yeah. What happens is it, when it breaks, right, mm -hmm. then you start getting blow-by and stuff, and yeah. then it, it melts. And when it melts is finally when you notice it's misfiring and burning a little bit of oil and stuff like that. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Piece is missing. I'm going to go wash it real quick. All right. Oh, we moved that ring, so. But look at that. The ring skirt is snapped. That is missing. If that's missing, though, I mean, it went somewhere in the engine, but probably why we saw some bearing wear. Oh my goodness. And even inside went all the way through to see that crack that is awesome it's awesome to see it's not awesome that it happened wow surface did not tell us all that so we can see the piston failure from the uh stock OEM cast pistons. Um, too much heat, too much abuse. Definitely wasn't the rings. Definitely was the piston. Very happy that it didn't completely disintegrate and destroy the engine even more. So this is a very basic rebuild because we got lucky on this time. So yeah, um, let's come in here. I mean, the crank spins beautifully. What's also wonderful is there's no wear on the crank itself. So again, on the bearing, you will see, oh yeah, look at all that wear. This is the number three. And let's compare it to, let's say, the number one. Well, they look kind of the same. But we did notice it a little bit of extra wear here on the crank girdle bearing side. So that's what that is. I should probably wash my hands too. <laughs> there's no, it's there's no wear. There's no abuse. It just snapped. Yep. Yeah, that's the. That's like what the two sevens would do. 
Well, like I was telling you about, it just piston failure just broke. Yeah, it's, I think it's nuts. Like, that's definitely an OEM quality thing, though, because these mm -hmm. are cast, right? Yeah, they're, it's like a, it's kind of like a hyper eutectic. It's a cast piston. It's a high silicon content cast piston. Okay. Makes them flexible, but brittle. Somehow. Definitely can see the brittleness. So when you took it out, that was that piece that fell out? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's why it wasn't actually in the engine. It was stuck right. in between the cylinder yep. wall and... This chunk of this, you see the second ring missing? Yeah, it's right here. Okay, there it is. Yeah. Yep. So the wear that we saw on the cylinder wall is only from that then? Is, is actually, it's from the oil ring. You okay. see how the oil ring's pinched right here? Yeah. Um, it's, it's from one of these rings, rings that are no longer able to move in and out. Mm -hmm. So and that will scrape the cylinder wall like that. It's nuts. Mm -hmm. Pretty crazy. That's an awesome failure. bearing. As Russ was telling us earlier, it's so the crankshaft could have some uh, lateral movement from the clutch and flywheel since it's not perfectly balanced from the factory. So it allows... It's, it's a, for uh, the clutch pedal itself. So the clutch pedal, when it disengages the clutch, it actually pushes this direction into the engine. I don't know if you can see that there. This direction into the engine. So that Every time you push the clutch, it closes up that oil gap, you get some friction, but when you release the clutch, oil fills up that area, cools it back down. Um, and then also just in general harmonics and stuff like that, you, everything's got to kind of have this free play of oil. Everything's floating in a vat of oil, essentially. Um, that's what bearing clearance is for, so that nothing's metal on metal. I send them the plate separate and mm -hmm. then they torque it through the home and everything. But this is supposed to simulate the head. So head. Yep. So we'll put the we'll put the head studs in and then the head studs will get torqued to the same spec that it would if the cylinder head was on it. And what that does is that distorts the bore in such a way that when we bore and hone it, it's gonna be perfectly round when we put the head on afterwards. So if we were actually to measure the bore right now, um, it would be out of round, it'd be egg-shaped, it'd be tapered, it'd have all these defects, basically. If we put the torque plate on it and measure the bore, it'd be perfectly round because it's simulating the cylinder head being torqued onto it. And especially with head studs where there's a lot more stress than like the stock head bolts, mm -hmm. um, it's gonna distort the bore even more. Uh, on a focus engine, for example, 
Uh, I've measured it with and without, just off the top of my head, I remember the numbers, and it's a thousandth and a half, which is huge when you're talking about a piston wall clearance of two and a half to three and a half thou. Um, so it, it's a big deal. If it's not torque plate uh, board and hone or torque plate honed, then you can definitely have an out around board. You can have things like um, it would affect longevity. It could affect uh, oil, oil being burnt, blow by, all kinds of different things. Okay, that is so cool though to have that. Look at that piece. Yep. Look at that. I love the. 1.6 EcoBoost and the Dead Hook Motorsports etched in or engraved. I'm official. Number 21. <laughs> oh, we are we're done. The engine's apart. We know what's wrong. You guys have seen it now. Cylinder 3's piston has completely failed, completely cracked. Honestly, a couple more miles and the whole thing could have been a catastrophic failure. So, um, thankfully, to Russ, to the luck of the engine, we've got a pretty, pretty easy rebuild. And um, Russ will be updating us with some photos of some installation pieces. And uh, as those come in, you guys will get to see that too, of installation of the pistons, of the rods, um, maybe a little bit of machine work in there when he's deburring things. Um, yeah, I'll try and get some videos of even things like uh, set and ring gap, uh, measuring piston wall clearances, and uh, you know, I'll probably just put a camera up and we'll just record what we can record, send it all to Peter and see what he edits, you know? <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining me on this journey. Um, I'll probably do a couple of vlogs of my days up here in Michigan and what it's like compared to uh, San Diego as well. I've got a, a little side trip as well um, planned going to Niagara Falls driving in the snow. So uh, we'll see how that goes since uh, I'm up here, might as well make uh, my time worth it. Uh, not that this wasn't worth it, this was, this was the whole reason I came up here. So <laughs> that's just a bonus feature of what I'm doing next. So see you guys next time.